Introducing the Komatsu HD 785-8 haul truck. The HD 785-8 is a US EPA Tier 4 Final Certified haul truck with a rated payload capacity of 101.6 tons, designed for quarry, aggregate, and mining applications. The HD 785-8 has two working modes, power mode for the highest production levels and economy mode for reduced fuel consumption. Within each mode, variable horsepower control monitors whether the truck is loaded or unloaded and changes the engine output to optimize productivity and fuel efficiency. The auto idle shutdown feature reduces unnecessary idle time. The Komatsu engine outputs 1,140 net horsepower, providing excellent travel performance on grade. The Tier 4 final solution includes dual Komatsu diesel particulate filters. Since the engine does not have an SCR system, DEF is not a required fluid. The engine powers the fully automatic, electronically controlled Komatsu transmission with seven forward speeds and two selectable reverse speeds. The skip shift function automatically selects the optimum gear based on the grade without downshifting through each gear, reducing transmission wear and material spillage while improving operator comfort. The tight turning radius of 33 feet 2 inches is made possible with the McPherson strut type independent front suspension, resulting in exceptional maneuverability when spotting in the loading area and positioning to dump. The linkage arrangement allows each wheel suspension to travel independently, allowing for a smooth, comfortable ride. The wide wheel base allows for quick access to service points on the sides of the engine with standard engine bay light. Komatsu Traction Control System is standard on the HD 785-8, improving productivity and tire life without sacrificing turning performance. The adoption of variable displacement piston pumps for steering and hoist, along with numerous updates to the drivetrain and engine control, increase fuel efficiency and lower cost per ton. The HD 785-8 is equipped with wet multiple disc brakes on all four wheels that also function as downhill brake retarder. Automatic retarder speed control allows the operator to set the desired downhill travel speed. When enabled, the brake retarder automatically applies to match the set downhill travel speed, allowing the operator to focus on the haul road. The HD 785-8 features a new lighting package, LED headlamps, side working lamps, and rear combination lamps provide lighting in various operating conditions and halogen fog lamps are standard equipment. The HD 785-8 has a new redesigned cab. Access is made simple with a standard lighted diagonal angled stairway, a new air suspension heated and ventilated operator seat, and upgraded trainer seat provide a comfortable ride throughout long shifts. The dump body has an SAE heat two to one capacity of 78.5 cubic yards. The V-bottom design lowers the load's center of gravity for increased stability. The standard body is equipped with side discharge exhaust configuration. A heated body arrangement and steel liner package are available as options. An integrated payload meter with left and right hand external display lamps is standard. Comvision is standard on the HD 785-8. The six camera system provides the operator a 360 degree bird's eye view of the working area on a dedicated monitor in the dashboard. The HD 785-8 also comes standard with a rear view monitoring system on a separate monitor located in the upper right hand corner of the cab for increased operator awareness. The auto idle settings system facilitates quick machine warm up by increasing the low idle speed until coolant temperature rises. Several features are included to facilitate machine maintenance and serviceability on HD 785-8. Battery and starter isolators and an immobilization switch with lockout tagout capability are located at the mount and dismount areas. The ground level service center provides easy access to drain and filler ports for engine, transmission and brake cooling, brake control, and steering and hoist oil. A fast fill fuel system ensures the HD 785-8 can quickly be put back into production. Anchor points are strategically located at maintenance areas, allowing technicians to attach service lanyards. A reversible hydraulic fan enables simple radiator cleaning. Grouped greasing points and centralized filters minimize maintenance time. And finally, an optional cold weather package includes engine oil and coolant electric heaters. Starting at the rear of the machine, if we look up, we see two cameras. The top camera being used for the reverse rear view camera and the bottom camera is utilized by the ComVision system. 
For easier maintenance, remote central grease fittings can be located on top of the differential housing. An addition of an inspection plate has been added to allow maintenance personnel a visual inspection of the differential ring gear. Continuing forward to the engine bay, we can see that the HD785-8 now incorporates panels for complete enclosure of the engine. A latched panel has been added for easy access to the KCCV filters and the engine oil fill neck and dipstick. Under the engine access panel is another enclosure that houses one of the high efficiency fuel filters and fuel pre-filter with water separator. Looking behind the fuel filter enclosure, another remote central grease fitting junction can be viewed. Moving to the left side of the truck, between the front and rear tires are a few items to be mentioned. Here is where we find the transmission oil sight gauge and fill neck. You will also find the visual sight gauge and the fill neck for the hydraulic tank. A new feature on the HD785-8 is the ground level service center, which includes a quick fill adapter for the engine oil, transmission and brake cooling oil, brake control oil, and the steering and hoist hydraulic oil. Looking to the top of the engine bay, we find the on-off toggle switch for the electric fuel priming pumps. The enclosure we come across is the data collection and battery disconnect box. Inside this box, we see the data collection ports, the machine immobilization switch, which will lock out all hydraulic functions. Other switches in this box are the battery disconnect switch, the starter lockout switch, and a toggle switch to operate the engine bay service light. Lastly is the auxiliary engine starting connector. Outside of the data collection and battery disconnect box are two switches. The first is the ground level emergency shutdown switch, which will shut the machine down in case of an emergency. This next switch is the staircase light toggle switch, which will illuminate the staircase in low light conditions. Under the frame rail, there is an enclosure that houses the coolant quick fill adapter. Under the cab in front of the tire, notice the two cameras used by the ComVision system. In looking at the center section of the right-hand side of the truck, we mainly see the fuel tank with a Wiggins quick fill, as well as a standard fill neck and a visual sight gauge. Mounted behind the fuel tank, we will find a tool storage box that is sealed from the environment. In the front of the fuel tank is the brake tank with a visual sight gauge and fuel neck which are both under covers. Looking directly at the front of the truck, you can see the easy access boarding ladder as well as multiple emergency egress points. The headlight cluster, which includes the fog light, low beam, high beam, turn signal, and clearance lamps can also be seen from this view. There is also a ComVision camera mounted to the front of the boarding access. Two wheel chalk holders can also be found at the front of the machine. The front right corner also houses two ComVision cameras as well. Moving into the right side engine bay is similar to the left side with the engine completely closed off. The latched access panel on this side will lead to the engine oil filters. The other high efficiency fuel filter and pre-filter are mounted in the same fashion as the left side in an enclosure mounted to the frame. The brake circuit supply filter is also mounted to the frame as well as the optional oil pan heater connection point. Now that we have been around the truck on the ground level, let's head up onto the deck. Once on top of the deck, the first thing we encounter is the battery box. The battery box is where the machine batteries are held, along with several circuit breakers and relays. Just behind the battery box is the coolant reservoir with visual sight gauge. Moving to the center of the deck is a panel that can be lifted to gain access to the top of the engine where the twin KDPFs are mounted. To the rear and above the engine access panel, is where the twin dual element air filters are mounted with their vacuum restriction gauges. Last on the deck is the cab access. The cab can be entered from the left side for the operator and the right side for the passenger. Now that we are inside the cab, the first thing we want to do is get familiar with the truck controls. We'll start with the adjustments that will make sure the operator is comfortable. There are multiple adjustments for this upgraded seat from height, weight, fore and aft, the seat cushion, back rest, arm rest, lumbar, heat, and ventilation. Each of these can be adjusted independently of each other. Also note the three-point restraint system for the seat belt. Mounted down on the left side of the seat is the bed dump lever. On the left side is a group of switches. First is the multi-switch panel, which controls the truck's monitor functions, as well as the cab's heating and cooling controls. Next is the monitor brightness selection switch, the side lamp switch, boarding ladder light switch, and the fog light switch. Just above these switches is the AM-FM radio. On the right side of the steering column is the retarder control levers. On top is the manual control lever 
and below is the ARSC or Auto Retarder Speed Control Lever. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes for operator comfort. The release handle for the adjustments is on the lower left side. Also on the left side of the steering column is the lamp switch, dimmer switch, and turn signal lever. Just below the turn signal lever is the knob that controls the windshield wipers and washer fluid. The main monitor panel is centered in front of the operator on the dash. It includes a color LCD screen and a round digital tachometer. From left to right, we have the centralized warning lamp, the parking brake pilot lamp, left-hand turn indicator, the high beam headlamp indicator, right-hand turn indicator, the brake oil pressure caution lamp, and the clearance lights pilot lamp. Directly in the center is the digital ARSC set travel speed indicator. We also see the ARSC display. Above the ARSC indicators is where the payload readout or a digital clock can be displayed as the operator has the choice in the monitor settings. On the right side of the center indicator, we find the shift lever position display. The character for the gear shift lever position will increase in size when selected. Left center, we see the eco gauge, which indicates instantaneous fuel consumption. Next to the eco gauge is the dump body status indicator. Moving to the top of the LCD monitor display is the HVAC status indicator. Not all of these icons are visible at all times, only when activated by the blue buttons on the multi-switch panel. Shown here are the operation mode, the fan speed, the temperature setting, and the AC on off status. In the right top corner is the shift indicator. Between the shift indicator and the HVAC status is the seatbelt caution lamp. This lamp will illuminate when the operator's seatbelt has not been fastened. On the left-hand side, there are two gauges, the engine coolant temperature gauge and the torque converter oil temperature gauge. Along with being the gauge indicators, they also act as warning lamps when required. On the right-hand side is where the retarder oil temperature gauge and fuel level gauge are located. These two gauge indicators will also act as warning lamps when required. Moving to the center of the LCD screen, in the bottom corners are meters. These meters can be set to be used as a machine hour meter, an odometer, or a clock. Between these two meters are the fan reverse rotation and the preheating pilot lamp. Moving slightly up, we find the message display prompt, after treatment devices regeneration display, the secondary steering, power mode, and the torque converter lockup pilot lamps. The next set of pilot lamps are the retarder engaged, KTCS engaged, and the speed limit engaged pilot lamps. Lastly, to the right of the LCD monitor display is a circular engine tachometer gauge with a digital speedometer in the center. Top right front corner of the cab is another monitor screen. This is the rear view monitor panel. The operator has the option to use the display continuously or only when the truck is in reverse. The brightness of this screen can be adjusted by the switch located just above the monitor itself. The gear shift lever is mounted into the dash panel, just to the right of the steering column. The lever must be in neutral for the truck to start. Just to the left of the gear shift lever is the parking brake switch, which needs to be applied for the engine to start. On the right side of the dash, we will find the hazard light switch and the secondary steering switch. When a situation calls for an additional steering oil supply, the secondary steering switch is manually operated. Never operate the switch for more than 90 seconds. To the right of the main monitor, switch panel, and above the shift lever is the ComVision monitor and ComVision monitor brightness adjustment switch. In front of the ComVision monitor are the ComVision selector switches. Below the secondary steering switch, we will find the two rocker switches, the AISS switch and the power mode selector switch. The AISS or automatic idle set switch allows the operator to select two different idle speeds depending on conditions. When the top of this switch is pushed, the truck will stay at low idle as long as the throttle is not applied. The power mode selector switch also allows the engine output mode to be selected between power mode and economy mode. Just below these switches is the starting switch. The switch has four positions. First is the off position. The second position is directly to the right. In this position, the electrical system is active. If the temperature is below a specific rate, the intake grid heater will operate automatically. The third position is the start position. Turning the switch to the left and fourth position will allow the intake grid heater to be activated manually. Just under the right arm rest is a console with another series of switches and components. Mounted to the front of the console is the engine shutdown secondary switch and the cigarette lighter. 
The engine shutdown secondary switch is used to stop the engine in the event that the starting switch is turned to the off position, but the engine does not stop. The cigarette lighter is now 12 volts. On top of the console are the left and right power window switches. To the rear of the power window switches are the heated mirror switch and the heated wire glass switch. Lastly, let's view the floorboard. Looking at the floorboard, we see a series of three pedals. From left to right are the secondary brake pedal, the red one, the service brake pedal, and the accelerator. The secondary brake pedal is to be used in the situation when either the service brake or brake retarder are not bringing the truck to a stop. The service brake is used to bring a rolling truck to a complete stop and hold the truck in position. Slowing the truck down on a regular basis with a service brake could cause overheating of the brakes, and this task should be performed with a brake retarder. The accelerator controls the engine output, therefore controlling truck speed. 